What up, what up, what up? This your boy Weezy. I'm your host. You're watching VIG TV. Yes, this is another episode, another episode. As y'all can tell, man, we listen to some of that old revolutionary music. Some of that NWA classic, Fuck the Police. And man, on this episode of VIG TV, man, we have a lot to talk about, man. We have a lot to talk about. Uh, we have the uh, Trayvon Martin trial. Uh, they're bringing that to a conclusion. Uh, we got the uh, latest news on Eric Snowden, you know, the CIA communication specialist turned hacker, alleged hacker. Um, we got um, not only Trayvon, we got entertainment news. Uh, we got what's going on with uh, T.I., Hustle Gang, Yo Gotti signing, uh, new remix. Um, also, uh, we got Beyonce skipping out on her dad's uh, wedding. He just got married, skipped out. We're going to bring you all the latest news, what's going on overseas. You know how y'all do. Y'all keep it locked to VIG TV as you normally do. We appreciate y'all for logging on. It's a pretty good episode, so y'all make sure you, we keep it locked. Y'all keep it locked. We're going to go to one commercial break, and we're going to be right back. VIG TV, what's poppin' world? This your boy, Pee Weezy. You know we on our NWA shit. You know niggas with attitudes. You know over here at VIG TV, man, we keep the music pumping. You know, we definitely keep it pumping. So, um, as I did say, we are going to definitely talk on uh, international news. So, you know, before we come to the United States, we're going to take it internationally. Uh, Eric Snowden, you know, he is the communication specialist, the ex-communication specialist, who's allegedly turned hacker, um, sending out, you know, uh, document information, certified, uh, classified information. You know, um, he's been going from different countries, uh, not alluding, just traveling because he's not under any arrest. Uh, but recently, uh, when Obama was asked uh, how we're going to handle the Eric Snowden question, uh, his reply to the statement was that we weren't going to be scrambling jets to find a hacker. So, I mean, I understand him because it costs a lot of money to fly these jets to try to find somebody who may or may not be in a particular location. So, I'm, I'm in agreement with the statement, but uh, he took a lot of slack by it. A lot of people feel like, you know, if the guy's leaking, you know, uh, critical information to the security of the country, or whatever the case may be, um, that he should be brought to justice and it should be no amount of money that the government would be willing to spend on him to get to him. Um, me, I feel like it's over-publicized. Um, but whatever the case is, I believe Eric Snowden's whereabouts, I think he still need to leak documents or whatever. So, you know, I think that's just one of his pit stops. You know, as we did state earlier that uh, he's trying to get to Cuba with his final destination uh, to the Ecuadorian government where he can get some uh, asylum. You know, so once again, VIG TV, we promise you we'll keep you updated on his whereabouts, all the latest news. That's the latest. We got the report from Eric Snowden, man. Once again, we salute you for your endeavors, uh, for everything that you're attempting to do uh, to get the information out there. So we salute you once again. Um, now we're going to switch lanes. We're still international. You know, we taking this VIG TV everywhere, out the country. Um, recently, there was a big situation um, in Iraq. And, you know, they have a little bit of uh, political unrest in Iraq. And recently, 15 insurgents took it upon themselves uh, to kind of combat the situation. They were killed. And, you know, you guys can have your own definition of what an insurgent is. You know, it depends on who you're getting that definition from. But and whatever the case is, um, they were attacked. 15 of them died. People not only in the United States and other countries, they're just not happy with how things are going. Which leads me to another part of the country internationally, which is uh, Egypt. Now, uh, Egypt, they have their turmoil over there with the actual people, uh, the actual citizens. Um, they're against the actual military and the popos. You know, over there in Egypt, they feel like, you know, the country is falling. And recently, 40 people uh, were actually killed over in Egypt for protesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We back. And as y'all see, I done took it back to the West Coast. The old classic NWA, Easy e NWA type of environment. You know, this right here is that real MF and G's. Y'all know this is a classic. From the Bay to the A, B.I.G. TV. We keep the hot music bumping. You got to know that. Hey, speaking of R.I.P. to Easy e uh, we're going to go ahead and touch on the Trayvon Martin death, the Zimmerman trial. And if you guys have been keeping up, you know, you guys can uh, draw, draw your own assessment. You know, everybody got their own, their own mind, so y'all can draw your own conclusion to really what's happening. Uh, me, myself, 
Um, I think it's going in a direction that's really not good for Trayvon. But we're not going to talk about the pains right now. We're going to stick straight to the facts. Um, the prosecutor wraps up their case, uh, and they're looking for a mistrial. They're actually alleging that uh, Trayvon was killed in self-defense uh, because of the Stand Your Ground law. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Stand Your Ground law a little bit later in this segment of Trayvon. But basically what the prosecutor is saying is that it was just an altercation that transpired where it was at most, you know, they're also stating that he was overcharged. So a lot of times when you overcharge somebody, you know, it's, it gets thrown out. So they said that he was overcharged. If anything, it should have been uh, maybe self-defense or something of that matter. But by them charging him with a high crime, uh, he may get off. Uh, during that same trial, uh, Trayvon Martin's mom, as well as his little brother, they testified in court that the sound that they heard from the 911 call that was placed was definitely Trayvon's voice. So they definitely uh, was able to prove, you know, by family members, you know, that that was their son as well as brother's voice that they heard on a 911 call that was after the shooting. Uh, which leads me to the shooting. Speaking of the shooting, the ME, which is short for the medical examiner, the medical examiner, he also testified that from the shooting and his experience that Trayvon Martin, uh, Trayvon Martin, excuse me, had 10 minutes to live after he was initially shot. So he was shot and then for 10 minutes he was actually alive, up to 10 minutes. And from which they're saying that for the 10 minutes, uh, Zimmerman offered no help, you know, no respiratory help, no CPR. He, he basically, in other words, just watched him die after he shot him at point blank range in the chest. So that was the medical, uh, the medical examiner's, that was his take on the gun shooting himself. From that aspect, it doesn't really look good uh, for Zimmerman. But once again, they have to prove the intent. Um, I'm hopeful that it'll end in a conviction and, and Zimmerman gets what he did, which was to take a life of an innocent man. Um, so y'all keep it locked with the Zimmerman trial. Now, I'm gonna stay within the Zimmerman trial, but I'm gonna switch a little bit lanes. Uh, this stand your ground law. Now last year, a young lady out of Florida, she's serving 20 years. Um, her and her husband had various verbal altercations, domestic violence situations. He was always the cause of it. And on this particular situation, uh, her name is Mrs. Alexander. Uh, she decided to take a gun and shoot it in the air to bag the guy up off of him, which was her husband. She didn't shoot him, didn't physically touch him, just shot it up like bag up off of him. Um, she was convicted in the same state of Florida for 20 years for aggravated assault. Uh, her defense was the stand your ground law. Here, uh, there was already paperwork on the alleged individual of domestic violence against her husband. She felt this was a way to get him off of her. She shot straight in the air. She was convicted for aggravated assault and she's serving 20 years. So the stand your ground law was not able to save her. Now here we have Trayvon who's murdered by a guy who stalked him in my opinion and vigilante style murdered the man and they're trying to implement the stand your ground law as a defense. So if the stand your ground law isn't able to be used clearly in a domestic situation where a young lady has document of abuse she doesn't shoot the domestic person, she shoots in the air. And she's sentenced to 20 years. And she's in Florida, she's been convicted. Um, she tried to appeal it, they uh, denied the appeal. You know, they've taken it to the special prosecutor who prosecuted the case, they put her on blast. She doesn't really want to talk about the case because that's a great injustice. So now we have two disparities of, as a defense but then it's not accepted as a form of defense in another case. So, you know, we want to kind of keep our eye on this Zimmerman case. And me, honestly, I think, you know, if, if he doesn't get sentenced, I think they're going to probably be ready to kick up a little bit dust like they did for the Rodney King and the OJ situation if OJ wouldn't have been acquitted. VIG TV, man. Praying for Drayvon Martin, the whole family, man, we appreciate y'all. You know, God gonna be with y'all. The truth will come out. And at the end of the day, if he do walk, he won't be safe to walk. So, so you know, entertainment news. Get in the I'm sure you guys have known. 
Yo Gotti, you know, new member of the Hustle Gang. Shout out to T.I. Uh, for bringing, you know, the King of Memphis uh, to not only the ATL, but to a lot of cities coming to you. A strategic move, you know, recently, uh, T.I. and Atlantic, they didn't really see eye to eye on his deal. You know, I don't know who was in favor, who wasn't in favor, but T.I. recently, uh, T.I. has recently gone independent. So, uh, one of the moves that he's made has been an independent entrepreneur that he is, has picked up, uh, picked up Gotti. You know, so we salute you for, you know, at least seeing the work that uh, Gotti's been putting in for a long time and hard work pays off. Uh, uh, as well in the independent news, since we're talking about independence, since T.I. is an independent, uh, your girl, Miss Neck and Back, my personal friend, protege, uh, Miss Kaya, she just dropped a bomb uh, with Miley Cyrus. You know, Miley Cyrus got the banger that she put out that's been killing the world, we can't stop. And uh, recently, uh, Miley Cyrus and, and Kaya, they've been doing a little bit back and forth with tweeting. And who knows, after a little bit of communication, there we have it. The uh, We Can't Stop remix, Miley Cyrus featuring Kaya. Uh, lots of the blogs picked it up, lots of downloads. Uh, I definitely appreciate uh, Miley Cyrus for respecting our culture as well as our character and our color. Uh, she's taking a little flack for being herself, but you know, be yourself, do you? You got one life to live, you know, and I feel like at the end of the day, you make music for the people. So we want to give a shout out VIG TV. We definitely salute Miley Cyrus. We salute all the independent artists, Miss Kaya Shimon. Y'all make sure y'all check out her uh, and uh, everything else, man. So we done brought you the international. We brought you the independence. We done brought you the politics. And we done covered everything we didn't need to cover. Y'all will catch us in the club coming soon. I'm your host, Pee Weezy VIG TV. We check it in, so it's time to check out.